Okay, welcome back to Top Solid. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to define one more quick tool. Here's how it's going to work. I'm going to leave my samples up, or we can close them. It doesn't really matter. We'll close them. We can always come back to them. And I'm going to go back to my tool library. In my tool library, so this was the SDJCR. That's a left-hand version of that tool. Uh, these are more OD tools, and that's fine. Let's maybe go find ourselves an ID tool. Maybe this one. This looks nice. Let's have a look. Perfect. Now, same rules as before. Okay. We're going to start by checking this. And a fast way to do an in-place edit, double left click on the part. Go to Surface, Heal, Select, Blue. And honestly, I just click through here fast because I just want it to be good. If it was bad, it would end up with a message telling me that there's still problems. I'm going to do the same thing here. Double click, Surface, Heal, select that body, boom, 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 done. Now, here, notice this is a separate body than this, okay? So in this case, you have a choice. We can, well, I'll show you. We're going to leave this alone. I'm still going to update this, but I'm going to simplify the collision body maybe. So I'm going to go here and check that. That's good. Done. Done. So here now we have one shape, two shapes, three shapes. So in all reality, we could do this a couple of ways. We could re-import the model not as an assembly, but re-import it as a single part file. Let me show you how to do that. I think that would be the simplest way. Now, if you were going to make these all as independent components to assemble them together, fine. But for the down and dirty, fast way of defining tools, let's take a look at it that way. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say I don't care to save any of that, okay? And I'm going to make another imported folder. And I'm gonna say imported as part files, just to differentiate in this sample. And let's see, this one was, I'm going to import the same one. There we go. This L16SS right there. Perfect. So here's what I'm going to do. Actually, I'm just going to copy this just so I know the name of it. And now I'm going to come to here, right click, and I'm just going to choose Import File with Conversion. And we'll go ahead and browse over to our customer here. Um, where did I put this? Hold on one second. Tooling. There we go. I'm going to go to lathe, and that's the name of the file. Step. Perfect. That's what I want. When I go to open the file, you see how it says document type for shapes is part, document type for assemblies is assembly? Because there's multiple bodies in there, it wants to create it as an assembly. But I'm going to cheat and say, you know what? Make it as a part. And now all those bodies were just brought in to one part file, which will make cheating a little bit easier. Again, we're importing this. It's a one-off import. We don't care. So we want to make this as simple as possible. Same rule goes as before, heal. But now I can select all of them at the same time and just let it do its thing. Done. And now we're just going to start making the frames like before. OK? So here, I'm going to start by making my frame here. I'm going to say construction, frame by point in two directions. And I'm going to say intersection between here and there. Why not? I'm going to say that my x-axis is following that. And I'm going to say my z-axis is following the shaft. Oh, pardon me. My z-axis is not following that. Excuse me. Is following y. Perfect. OK. Or we could say y is following the shaft direction if you want. That's another way to do it. Perfect. Then I want to make the frame over here as well. And what I want to do is define my frame to be, again, at that same level as this plane. OK? So what I want to first measure is to see if this happens to be at that location. So I'm going to go Analyze. Again, I'm going to set myself to this frame. And now I'm going to choose, oops, I want to change the frame to that frame. And now I'm going to choose. The center line of that. And my Z shift is zero, which is perfect. That means that this point is on the center line of my bar stock, which is great, which means now that 
when I go to make my frame, I can do it this way. I'm going to say frame by point in two directions, and it's going to be an offset point again from here, going that way, the other way. I'm going to offset it to whatever I want that default stick out distance to be again. And I'm going to say, just for fun, it's going to be 25 millimeters. X is going to be following the X negative, okay? or you can choose right on this X, that's fine. And Z, in this case, is going up the shaft that way. Perfect. We have everything there. I'm going to zoom up on here, select this, make my sketch like I did before, and I'm going to intersect with that insert and that insert. I'm going to make one more quick sketch too because I want to know what the inscribed circle diameter is on this. So I'm going to select this face, make a sketch, and watch what I do. I'm going to go to circle, free size, snap to the center, and snap to that. So we're at a nine and a half millimeter diameter inscribed circle. Awesome. I'm going to cancel X. I don't need to keep it. But I do also want to run one more analysis because I want to make sure that I understand what size insert this is. So this is from here to here, and that's an 80-degree insert. So that's a C-series insert. Perfect. Now, oh, probably the nose radius would be good to know as well. Let's go here. Perfect. Dot 8. Done. Okay. So now we're ready to do the definition. So let's do it. I'm going to go to my tools. I'm going to come down to functions, cam wizards, machining component wizard, cutter, turning, internal turn because it's important, okay? Universal. Dot eight. Hand of tool. This is a right hand tool. Cutting edge size. This is a C series insert. Nine and a half is that inscribed size. Entry diameter, this is important as well now. So an entry diameter from the center line, it wants to know how big of a diameter do you need to have in order for this to start machining. So one of the ways you can analyze that, if you don't know the answer to this, is we can go to uh, analysis here. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself to this frame. And now I'm going to measure this point. And its X value is 16 or 32 millimeters, roughly. Okay? So what we're going to do is set this to 32. That's the absolute minimum diameter. Insert thickness, clearance angle, that's all fine. And now again, with the right-hand insert, we're going to say that's our frame. Next, we want to know what this diameter is, right? Again, measure it right on the fly. Why not? Let's go here. What's this diameter? So that's a 25 millimeter diameter, perfect. We can set that to 25. And now we're gonna go here, select our tooling frame. Next, what's the insert? Well, the insert is this, right? What is the collision shape? This, ah, this is a separate shape, that's weird. We'll go solve that next, hold on. Next, and now we're going to say, okay, the cutting edge origin is done, but the, the direction is there and here. And remember, pay attention to those vectors. They need to be facing away from the corner radius. Corner radius, that's perfect. You can see it's highlighted in blue right there. And that's the frame. That's also perfect. OK. Validate. That's the name of it. And done. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit Save once. And now we're going to solve this problem so that we get this in the collision shape as well. And the way we're going to solve that problem is we're going to go to Entities. I'm going to pin this out, OK? And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Shape and Unite. And I'm going to unite to this shape, this, and that. I'm going to click OK. And it says we have a non-manifold condition. Cool. So let's go try to fix that. That's going to be... Oh, that's because of the edge-on-edge -edge condition down there. Okay, so let's undo the command once really quick. Let's go hide this for the moment, and we're going to modify this, okay? And all I'm going to do to modify it is I'm going to go to, oh, where's my modify? There it is. Oh, wait, nope, surface. That's what I want. I'm going to go to remove, turn that on, set that to blend. Perfect. If I turn this shape back on now, those two really are intersecting. And if I go here and do the Boolean, between this and this. We can even add the screw if you want. Problem done. It's now one shape. If I turn this shape on and off, you can see it's one shape. But to be sure we're not passing more shapes than that, 
we're going to go to our representations and we're going to remove what we don't need. So we do want the cut shape and the GTM shape, but the one and twos we can get rid of because they don't need to come with for the ride anymore. And now we have created our ID boring bar. Perfect. Let's save that. I'm going to check mine in so it's ready to test. And let's go quickly test it. We'll just go to our test project here. Everything's referenced already. Let's go open up our CAM file again. I already have, I believe, in a boring bar present. I do. I'm just going to delete that tool and add a different tool. Okay, so if I go here and we say internal and we say get rid of you, we say yes. Perfect. And now I can go here to internal, double click. Here's our internal tool, right? If I validate, they should pop right into there based on our stick out distance, and you're ready to go. You've now defined an internal boring bar that's ready to be used in your next internal operation.